Hello and welcome to my comparison video of the Sisters of Battle or Adeptus Sororitas uh, codexes. Um, I'll be comparing the 8th edition codex right here um, that came out in November 2019 with the very recent 9th edition codex that just came out about a month ago or so. Uh, 2021. It's been about a year and a half um, clearly since the, the previous codex. This one um, was included in the army uh, set and like all 8th edition codexes it is smaller in every possible way other than page count <laughs> normally. Um, it's shorter and it's thinner um, the 8th the edition codexes. So price-wise, I believe the original Sisters of Battle Codex was um, £25 when it came out. Difficult for me to say because obviously this is from the army set. However, this new 9th edition codex is £30 and that's the same for uh, most of the full codexes now. Um, my opinion still remains the same, uh, that I've been disappointed with uh, all of these 9th edition codexes and um, they don't have a lot of content or lore or backstory or photos or anything like that compared to the 8th and particularly the 7th edition uh, codexes which were much more fleshed out and I also hold the view codexes should only be £30 if they're over the 200 page mark such as the Space Marine codex if they're under 200 pages uh, they can be £25 and if they're under 100 pages they can be £20. Um, I'd prefer them to have that pay grade scale and I know that that might get a bit confusing but I'd much rather have it that than Games Workshop just set the, the, the top uh, price. It just doesn't sit well with me that a codex that's under 100 pages is the same price as say the uh, Space Marine one. But anyway, uh, you've got 128 pages for the new codex and 112 for the old one. So you are getting uh, 16 more pages there. In terms of units, uh, they've been bumped up to include an extra uh, eight units. So again, you're looking at a grand total of eight extra pages if you wanted to look at it that way. So what we'll do is we'll go through these comparisons. I'll always have the 8th edition codex uh, on the left and the 9th edition codex on the right. So to start off with, I've already mentioned about the size, uh, the inside cover is different, you've got the artwork there uh, for the 8th and you've got this Game of Thrones season 6 uh, artwork <laughs> for, for 9th. You've got a different looking uh, start page, you've got the introduction and you can see there 112 pages versus 128. Got some artwork. Um, not sure why this is a bit, you know, why, why it's gone like that, but it has. Um, you got some more artwork, and so on. So yeah, there's a little bit about uh, Sisters of Battle. Um, some short stories. Uh, you've got um, the hierarchy. There's the hierarchy there as well. Um, and then it goes straight into Morven Val, which is brand new character for Sisters. Uh, you've got Wars of Faith, but this one starts with uh, Martyred Lady, then Valorous Heart. So this one kicks off with the character and goes through a few of them. So you've got Celestine, Ephrael Stern. Um, you've got Warzone, Varentia. You've still got Orders here. And then you've got the Orders Militant for the new book. So it starts off with Martyred Lady, Valorous Heart. And it goes through all the Orders that are in here. Bloody Rose, which is my one. Uh, Eben Chalice. Uh, Argent Shroud, Sacred Rose, Orders Minoris, which is these. I like this layout where you had the the icons and then you had um, you know examples of them. And um, this looks just a bit a bit odd, a bit like a list. Whereas this is well, I just prefer the layout. Um, Non-militant orders. You've got a map. Uh, this goes on a little bit more, and then you don't get a map. But you've got vestments of purity, so you you know kicks off by looking at them all. On this one, you've got uh, timeline, four pages as you used to used to get. This one continues with pictures of the models. Um, big focus on the new models as always. They, they like to do that, like you know the castigator tank. Why not? Big picture, a load of models there. You've got this lovely artwork 
with uh, Chaos. I think it's Alpha Legion. Yeah. And then the old codex goes into the units themselves specifically. So Kananesis, Junith, Arusha, and I much prefer the layout of the, the 8th edition with these, where they talk about these units, uh, you know, individually. But the new codex then goes into the rules. So nothing about these particular individual units, which absolutely sucks, and it's the biggest thing that they're missing for these codex. It highlights the combat patrol. Um, this combat patrol, if you haven't had sisters before, it's fantastic. Uh, it's definitely worth picking up. But if you have got sisters, um, it's still worth picking up because I think it's £85 and you get a £35 rhino in it, so you're getting £50 for all those other um, bits and pieces. Um, but if you've got the army set uh, already, uh, then it's, it's not worth going for. So they go through the rules while the old codex is fleshing out all the units, which is brilliant. Um, so we'll get there, guys. We'll get there. Because the main part of this book... Oh, and then you've got Blessings of the Faithful. Um, so uh, these are all the blessings that you can have. Warlord traits, hymns of battle, relics... Uh, chapter approved rules, crusade rules, there's a big focus on crusades, look. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It's almost ten percent of the book is just about crusade rules. Um, then it goes on to data sheets. So we'll, we'll just um, speed up a little bit with the 8th edition. Um, so you're still going to, oh, and then you've got some photos of the models. And you've got the Ex-System Immolator. Uh, I remember this codex being really quite odd because it had some of the new units and things, but not all of them. So you don't see any Anchorites. You don't see the new Seraphim. Uh, it had Janisha and it had Triumph of St. Catherine. No, I don't think it had Triumph of St. Catherine anywhere. So it's just a focus on the Immolator and the Exorcist, but it didn't have like a full... Um, and it had the new Sisters of Battle uh, a kit. So really it just introduced uh, Arusha, uh, Sister ba the Battle Sisters, the, dial the Dialogus, uh, the, the Hospitaler. And that was it, because I think they didn't have the new um, Penitent Engines. There's the Imagifier as well. But there was a lot that they, that they missed out. Um, we're in this book, uh, like the Zephyrim, like the Rhino, uh, like the Anchorites. I think they've got the Retributors there, yeah, so they've got those. Um, but they missed out on quite a few, uh, few of the units there. So, um, you've got the Armoury, and then it talks about the data sheet. So, straight away, we've got the Canon S. What do we have here? Oh, we have some Sacred Rites first, before we get into it. Uh, here we've got Morven Val. So Morven Val, brand new character that they introduced. Uh, I will go into her rules more in depth uh, in her upcoming review, which is uh, next week. And um, pretty much she is fantastic. Um, she's got a two plus normal, a four plus invulnerable, and she can um, ignore uh, mortal wounds on a on a four plus. Her weapons are great. You know, strength eight, AP minus three, damage three, um, and. Uh, Wound rolls of sixes um, give that unit a, a, a mortal wound in addition to everything else. She's got a missile launcher. Um, she's got a, a nice uh, heavy bolter there called Fidelis or Fidelis or Fidelis. I don't know. Anyway, um, and she's got some nice abilities too. Then we go on to the Canon S. Now, Canon S, same uh, points cost, still three. Uh, nothing else has changed there. Um, with the profile at least, but when we look into the weapons, the Brazier of Holy Fire actually is included in, in the weapons. It is worse in that it mainly affects demons uh, more now, whereas before uh, you could be giving um, uh, D3 mortal wounds to units, whereas that doesn't happen now. Uh, it's only against demons. The Condemner Bolt Gun is better though, because it has a, a separate um, profile called Condemner Stake. Um, so uh, when you're going up against Psychers, the unit suffers D3 uh, mortal wounds, which is uh, better than the D3 damage um, that we had uh, before. 
The Blessed Blade has changed a little bit in that it's a D3 now instead of just a straight up two. Similar kind of um, deal. Power swords work the same. They haven't changed those. And the Nor Rod and Rod of Office are, are slightly different in their wording. Uh, then we've got the Palatine. So we haven't got any, you know, we, we go straight from a character to a normal Canoness to a, a Palatine, which in my opinion is sort of like your, your new Adeptus Sororitas Lieutenant, like stand-in. I mean, if you don't want to pay the four points cost um, for a Canoness, which is, you know, power points three compared to power points three for Palatine, then you can go for a Palatine. The Palatines are a little bit cheaper in match play points cost, um, but uh, they're still pretty decent uh, HQ if you don't want to go the whole hog. Um, you know, they've got three plus normal, four plus invulnerable. Uh, they have this aura ability where um, you can reroll wound rolls of a one, and you know, you can couple that with a Canon S's uh, Lead the Righteous, where you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks. So, yeah, if you've got both of them, then that's a nice little synergy uh, in your strategy. You've got Junith Arusha which is over here. Her profile remains the same, but her flamer does get a bit of a buff in the form of it's now 12 inches. So I'm not sure who made that decision to have uh, the original heavy flamer as, as, as a range eight. Um, maybe it was the length of the flamer template, um, but either way, it's been increased to uh, 12 inches now. Um, and furthermore, um, it's now got a strength six instead of a strength five, uh, which is fantastic. Um, the Rosaria, she's got the Rosarius as normal, the four plus and vulnerable save. And she's got the pulpit of St. Holine's uh, Basilica. Uh, she's also got um, Lead the Righteous uh, Order, um, as well as the Fiery Conviction. So she's got an extra extra ability there. Then you've got the Missionary. Uh, he or she or it, whatever, has, uh, has gone up in PowerPoints cost, but they have had an increase in their leadership. They've now got a leadership eight. Uh, and instead of um, both the lone mission and the war hymns and word of the emperor they've just got this emboldened by prayer so models within six inches of him use his leadership instead so it's a shame that he's lost the war hymns ability it's a shame that he loses the plus one attacks characteristic but he does now count as a priest but the priest does have uh, war hymns now then we carry on with HQ for a little while with the new codex with uh, Saint Celestine and Gemini Superior, uh, which we did have uh, right at the start. Uh, she is more expensive now. She's a power points cost of a 10. She's got exactly the same stat line though, still the two plus save and the attacks. The Ardent Blade is better um, because it's kind of like a flamer weapon. It's a 12 inch now and uh, you're getting strength six AP minus two as well, uh, which is not to be overlooked. Uh, the Ardent Blade melee profile as well has had a buff. It's now minus four AP. And on sixes, uh, the target is suffering two mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. So that's a big, big buff for uh, Celestine. Of course, she's got all of her abilities. You know, she's got Miraculous Intervention. Uh, she's got the Healing Tears. She's got uh, Angelic Savior, uh, which she didn't have before. She's got Sky Strike. She's got the Armor of St. Catherine, which not only does it give her a four plus and vulnerable, uh, but you subtract one from the damage characteristic. And she's got Life Wards as well. Uh, those rules are, are kind of put into the elite section of uh, the 8th edition book and they count as a separate elite choice. I think it works better to have her and her superior in one HQ choice now. You've got Triumph of St. Catherine, which has had a points increase. It's now power points cost of 11. It's had a debuff though of um, the number of attacks. It's only got 10 attacks now and it used to have 14. Uh, the save is still the same. You've got the Martyr's Sword which works exactly the same as it did before, and also relic weapons are the same too. You've got all of the abilities uh, for them. They work a little bit different than they did before. Then you've got another HQ uh, choice in the ninth edition book, which is Ephrael Stern and Kiganel of the Bloody Tears. Uh, they were they featured in one of the Psychic Awakening books. Their power points cost of a six, and I think I've gone through their rules before. Then you're into troops, so you've got a Battle Sisters squad. Um, it's a shame that sisters only have one troop choice. I would have liked to have had some kind of, you know, angelic uh, or 
um, religious kind of fanaticism, some kind of like uh, religious cult type squad unit that you know uh, could take uh, could could be buffed by the war hymns and, and things like that because there are fighters uh, and things that would rally to the cause of the emperor in in certain times, um, but we don't get any of that. We've just got the Battle Sisters squad, and uh, they are a little bit cheaper their power points cost of a three now um but all of their stat line remains exactly the same then we're on to elites and um we start off with a new unit astrid thurga and agathe dolan and um, the reviews for those are coming very soon they're pretty good they give you uh, army a nice buff you've got the imagifier uh, which you did have in the old uh book uh, right here at the end of the elite section, um, almost. Uh, she has had a points increase. She's a power points cost of a three now, um, but her stat line remains the same. Uh, she's still got the litany of deeds. They work exactly the same as they did before. She's still got a bolt gun, so nothing's really changed. You've got a dialogus, uh, which we go back uh, a page. And uh, she has had a points increase as well to a power points cost of a three. Um, her stat line is exactly the same as it was before nothing's changed there and um, her dialogus staff works the same she's still got the loud hailer or lord hailer i think it's loud hailer um, she's she's got a she's now got the non-militant order and a, and still got the stirring rhetoric she just misses out on the spiritual fortitude then we've got the preacher uh, which i think the elite section started off with the preacher uh, again has had a power points increase now power points cost of a two um exactly the same stat line though but this time instead of the just the last pistol um he gets an auto pistol and also there's a zealots vindicator which i guess is some kind of like flamer uh type uh melee weapon um i'm thinking that you can use the flamer from the uh blackstone fortress that model as a preacher i'm think i'm thinking so yeah, a few things have changed with the Preacher. Um, Celestian squad, uh, still uh, with elites. They work exactly the same as they did before. All of the stat line works the same. They've still got bodyguard, they've still got swarm protectors, they've still got incensor cherub and simulacrum imperialis. If you didn't know what a Celestian squad was, it's like a normal Battle Sisters squad, but their weapon skill is better and um, their leadership is better and they've got two attacks instead of the one. So they're just a bumped up um, Battle Sister squad, really. Uh, and furthermore, you can have five of them, one with a weapon from the special weapons list, and you can have two of them with uh, weapons from the special weapons list instead of just one and then one from heavy support. Uh, you've got a brand new unit here, the Celestian Sacrosants, which I will be doing a review on very, very soon. Uh, fantastic unit. I can't praise them enough. Maybe they'll FAQ them because their save is two plus. Uh, I hope they don't because that's just fantastic and it's one of the main reasons you get them. The only downside to them is they are a bit squishy with the toughness 3, but they get two attacks, their spears and their maces are decent, they've got two plus saves, they've got invulnerable four plus saves, um, and they've got the bolt pistol struck to the shields. What more do you want? They're one of my favourite uh, new units that uh, Games Workshop have brought out. You've got the Hospitala, which is down here and uh, she has had a power points increase uh, for the same stat line. The Chirurgan's tools uh, work exactly the same. Um, she's got a couple of new rules though, uh, such as the non-militant order, uh, the Medicus Ministorum, which she had before, but she's also got sacred healing as well. Um, then you've got a new unit, the Dogmata. Yeah, odd that uh, this new unit costs uh, four power points. Don't know if you can see her there, but um, yeah, more expensive than like the Hospitala and the Dialogus and things. But the main reason you'll uh, get her is because of her sacred task and unflinching determination. Her mace is all right, but uh, you know, she is a bit squishy um, and she doesn't have an invulnerable save. You've got the Paragon War Suits, um, which is a brand new unit. Uh, I'm not sure whether Sisters needed this. Uh, it's great that we've had an increase of two units with a two plus save and these 
uh, are fast, they're a movement of uh, eight inches, they've got high strength, high toughness, decent number of wounds, decent number of attacks, um, they've got access to, I, I say the vanilla, the boring weapons, you've got heavy bolters, heavy flamers and multi melters, but they do get these nice little um, either storm bolters or this new weapon, the Paragon grenade launcher, which fires out of their um, sort of shoulders, I guess. Um, they don't have uh, an invulnerable save per se, they just have the normal sort of shield of faith um, invulnerable save, so it would have been nice if they had like some kind of five plus invulnerable. You've got the Repentia Superior, um, which is in this book here. Uh, I think... Right here, same power points cost. Stat line has changed a little bit. Um, she's now getting five attacks. Don't know why, but she's just getting five attacks. She's got her neural whips, um, which work exactly the same as they did before. She's got a grenade, a bolt pistol. Um, in terms of abilities, um, she's still got Scourge of the Penitent, and she's also got Driven Onwards, but she's now got uh, Overseer of Redemption, um, which adds one to the wound roll. Very nice buff there. Sisters Repentia. Uh, they have had a points. They have had a power points increase. Um, you can still take ten of them. Their stat line is exactly the same as it was before, and the penitent uh, eviscerators um, still work the same. They've got the solace and anguish, uh, and they've got the martyrdom uh, abilities too. Crusaders. Right here, same uh, power points cost, and uh, and uh, but they've had a, a buff in terms of their save. Um, you can now have uh, you've now got a three plus normal save and a four plus. Um, yeah, so they're they're pretty decent in that respect, uh, and you can have uh, you know six of them. Um, I just wish that they'd update the models. They've still got Ecclesiarchy Battle Conclave. Um, they've got the Crusader Shield, um, which is an odd one because before they used to have a uh, three plus and vulnerable save because of their Storm Shield, and now they've only got a, a four plus and vulnerable save. I mean, I guess it kind of ties in with the um, uh, Sacrosance uh, four plus and vulnerable, but still, <laughs> of course, it would have been fantastic to, to give them a three plus as it is a big, big Storm Shield. So unfortunately their normal save has been buffed, but their vulnerable save has gotten worse. Arco-Flagellants, Arco-Flagellants, although costing the same power points, um, they have had a bit of a buff with their toughness. Their toughness is now four for some reason, um, but everything else remains the same. The Arco-Flails are a little bit different uh, in that you're getting two hit rolls instead of one, whereas before you were getting D3, and I would have preferred uh, D3. You're still getting Berserk Killing Machines, uh, you're getting a new rule called Instrument of Pain and Penance, and you're but you're also getting Ecclesiarchy Battle Conclave. Death Cult Assassins, um, same power points cost. They have had a buff. Their weapon skill is now two plus as befitting for an assassin. Um, their, the rest of the stat line uh, remains the same. They've still got that five plus and vulnerable save and the, uh, and the Death Cult Power Blades also work the same as well. The Dominion Squad, so we're into fast attack here. So the Dominion squad, um, you can still take uh, 10 of them. They've had a power points cost decrease and their rules for Incensor Cherub and Simulacrum uh, Imperialis have been moved to the other war gear section, but everything else works the same. And um, you've got the Seraphim squad. Their power points cost remain the same. But they have had a buff in terms of attacks. They're now getting two attacks each and uh, their leadership is an eight. So they've had a buff. Um, I think it's really lazy. Uh, one thing I, I will mention right now, I think it's really lazy that Games Workshop have stopped including a lot of the weapon profiles in with, with the squad. There's so much wasted space in these new books. You look at that eighth edition book there for the Seraphim squad. Um, you know, you've got everything that you need on there, all the weapons, all the abilities, and a nice picture of them. On here, if you just look at the Dominion squad, you haven't got anything. Um, you know, and, and I think the, it's a missed opportunity. And it's a shame when they're charging more now for the codexes as well. That's the real kicker. If they were charging less, 
wouldn't be so uh, so bad. But because they're charging more for less, yeah, it's it's a real sticking point with these uh, new books. I don't need any tin foil on my head to um, point out that that's what they want to do. They they want to push people onto the digital only because it's you know it doesn't cost them money uh, to to make these books in China and get them shipped back over here and things. It, you know they can just edit things on the fly and then just put them put them available on the app but they should really be giving those rules out for free anyway that's my little rant over with the seraphim squad then you've got the zephyrim squad now this is an interesting one because the zephyrim are elites in the old uh, codex and um, look they're elites here but they now count as fast attack um which is great they've had a, a power points cost decrease as well and they've had uh, uh, another buff and they've now got three attacks making them extremely decent uh, to, to take um, you know you've got three attacks each with the superior having four uh, that means that you'll have um, you know minimum of 30 attacks if you get all 10 of them into close combat uh, or, or even 31 with the superior but they've got the power swords which have had a buff because the strength is plus one and um, so they're now hitting with the strength of four instead of three so that's fantastic they're cheaper uh, they get more attacks and they're stronger in close combat uh, you've got a couple of other rules here uh, you've got the angelic visage so the invulnerable saves um, so the invulnerable save models in this unit received from shield of faith uh, is improved by one so they're getting their five plus invulnerable instead of sixes uh, so they've so they've had that one before, and they've also got Sky Strike, but they miss out on Zephyrin Penitent, um, where they could reroll charge rolls, and they miss out on Rapturous Blows, um, where you can reroll the wound rolls, and that's one of the main reasons why you would have got them. Um, but I guess that strength uh, four um, negates that somewhat. But I still would rather have the ability to reroll wounds. Then you've got the Retributor Squad, uh, which is heavy support. And um, whereas in the old codex, it started off with the tanks. I like it that they started off with the um, sort of troops. That's great. And so the retributors, they're the same power points cost and exactly the same stat line as they were before. Um, it's a shame that you don't get the weapon profiles for the weapons. There's plenty of room there, Games Workshop. You could have just included that space there and shown the profiles for the um, heavy weapons, you know, the uh, heavy bolters, the multi melters, just to give you a taste and, and you know, when you're building your army. Um, but what they do miss out on, which is a big, big debuff, is this faithful advance. Models in this unit do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing uh, heavy weapons. They, they've given it and now they've taken it away, um, which is really, really quite bad. Um, all you're getting now, all you're getting now is a storm of retribution um, where. Uh, where the enemy doesn't gain benefits from uh, cover from the attack. whoop de do. Um, I'd much rather have Rites of Fire and I'd much rather have Faithful Advance. They were better um, and they've gotten worse. Terrible. Then you've got Mortifiers. Then you've got Mortifiers, which are the same power points cost. They've had a bit of a debuff with their movement. It's dropped to eight inches instead of nine inches. I guess they thought they were a bit too fast. Um, and everything else has remained the same but of course you know you've had the buffs with the heavy bolters and the ministorum um heavy flamers uh being a strength six uh, a being a strength six now uh but and uh being a 12 inch range and a strength six the penitent buzz blades uh you'll be pleased to know have had an increase um they've they're now armor penetration of minus four um which is lovely um, and remember they're plus three strength, so that's strength eight. So it's like a power fist, but with a bit, so it's like a power fist, but with, uh, you know, no um, debuff to uh, it being able to hit. Uh, the Penitent Flails as well um, have had a, a little bit of a debuff and they're now only strength of the user, whereas before they had a strength of plus one. And you're only getting uh, two hit rolls instead of three hit rolls and you don't get any uh, extra uh, abilities if um, the bearer is equipped with two of them which and to get any more buffs for that you've got to get uh, you've got to have the ability wrath of the penitent um, where 
you're getting two buzz blades the attacks go to five but two penitent flails attacks go to five as well so you, you you're kind of getting it so it's a bit of a buff so you're getting the buff there but it's just written somewhere else you've got berserk killing machines and you've got instrument of pain and penance and you're still getting anguish of the unredeemed you're missing out on no reprieve and you're missing out on blades of agony penitent engines themselves and heavy support right here they're the same power points cost and they have had a buff their ballistic skill now is four plus which is fantastic and um, you can still get four of them and as i said uh, their buzz blades have had that extra armor penetration added and the flamer uh, the extra strength and the range um they've got a few more uh, abilities now that they didn't have before they've still got berserk killing machines but they've got endless suffering they've got wrath of the penitent and they've got instrument of pain and penance so a nice little buff for penitent engines then you've got the tanks so the exorcist it has had a points increase and it's had its strength and toughness lowered so it's now only strength six instead of seven and it's now only toughness eight and it's now only toughness seven instead of eight and it and to add insult to injury it's also only got 11 wounds instead of the 12 but the leadership has increased to eight and the save is still three plus now has there been any change in the weapons so um before you had the exorcist conflagration rockets and the exorcist missile launcher i'm pleased to say that you still have those two um they're both the same uh, range the conflagration rockets are still heavy 3d6 um, but they've had a debuff, unfortunately, guys. They're strength five, but their armor penetration now is only minus one instead of the minus two. However, they've had the new ability of blast. The target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. I'd like to go one step further. You know, whirlwinds and uh, Arcus missile launchers, uh, just, just missile launchers in general, typically have the rule where uh, you don't need to have line of sight. And I think for a 48 inch range, weapon that fires missiles that is a must um maybe we'll get that in the next edition but uh, uh, that's the one thing i would add to this uh, especially as it's gone up in price the exorcist missile launcher itself then this again has had a debuff uh, its arm penetration is now only minus two and it used to be minus three and that was the go-to kind of anti-armor missile launcher it's, it's a shame that one um, it would have been better as well if it also had the blast rule but there we go and of course we've had the usual um uh, buff for the heavy bolter by having you know damage of two instead of the one then we've got a brand new unit uh, the castigator tank i've just done a review of that unit and that should be up uh, next week so i hope you enjoy that but it's a fantastic you know tank with a uh, a main cannon of 72 inch range which is kind of better than our last cannon and uh, it's really worth um uh, picking but it, unfortunately it still suffers from the you know strength six toughness seven that the exorcist has uh, but that is a same power points cost of a nine you've got the rhino which is in the transport options um right here uh it has had a power points cost increase but all of its stats remain the same you are getting the six plus and vulnerable save because of that shield of faith uh you've then got the immolator which has had a big power points increase the biggest in the whole book it's power points cost of a seven now instead of a, a five I, I would have preferred it at the at the five um i think there's a couple of reasons one is the heavy bolt has had the damage uh, bumped up to two the hunter killer missile across the board has had an increase of strength to 10 instead of eight the immolation flamers have had a buff to 18 inches they're really really worth picking they are heavy 2d6 now and um, but they've got a better strength uh, uh of six and also multi melters have had a buff you know they've they're now getting double the shots so you're getting four shots there a uh, strength eight ap minus four um so it really is worth picking one of these just for the uh, multi melters um everything else remains the same though and then the final unit is the battle sanctum that's had a power points cost of a uh, increase of a that's had a power points cost increase it's now a power points cost of a four and before it was a three um you've got uh, a load of abilities there you've got consecrated ground prayers to the saint and pray to the saint um i prefer the layout of the the previous book some of these work differently as they did before so there you go that's uh, kind of like my uh, in-depth look um you've got the weapon profiles of course and you've got the 
uh, yeah, more weapon profiles. You've got a picture there for some reason. You've got the Sisterhood of War, so you've got the different order convictions. Um, so this is at the back of the book look. You've got the stratagems, whereas before we had them at the at the front. You've got the points values, but there you had the warlord traits. You've got the relics. There's your points values and your tactical objectives, whereas this finishes off with the points values and a glossary and also, I think, a reference. Um, so it's a little bit tidier at the back because you've only got the points values there. Uh, but there you go. That's my uh, very large um, Sisters of Battle, uh, you know, versus comparison video between the 8th edition codex and the new 9th edition. These videos take me over an hour to record and then I go through and watch it for another hour or two and edit out all my mannerisms. So, so if you have enjoyed this video and want to show your appreciation, please do give it a like and subscribe. And if you can, use that Element Games affiliate link code below and the crystal code to save yourself up to 25% off of your Warhammer goodness. What do you guys think of the ninth edition? It's inevitable that I've missed a few things from the codex, so please do help us all out. Put it in the comments as always, and then we can uh, discuss at length uh, those changes. What do you guys think? Please do put your thoughts and opinions as well down below. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.